ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Slasher Club. You're probably wondering why I'm wearing my sun sunglasses, which I haven't worn in a, ve in a while, and that's because tonight on the Slasher Club, hopefully soon to be, the movie club, or, fuck, what was the, uh, what was the rest of the list we came up with? Maybe the film exorcists, the movie world, or in the movies. The movie world, in the movies, movie magic reviews. Or film exorcist. But it's up to you guys. We will post a poll soon on what you guys think we should name. Our new name should be. And I feel we've been doing horror movies a lot, but after Saw... We were thinking of doing Nightmare on Elm Street, but we want to know what you guys think. Should we stick with Nightmare on Elm Street, or should we brighten our horizons and move on to more than just horror movies? I don't know. We could do stuff. We could go back to Star Wars movies. We could do horror. I mean, anime. We could do. Disney movies, despite what that one person said before about how she'd leave if we start doing Disney reviews. We could even do superhero movies, maybe a bit of DC and Marvel. Depends on your opinions, but tonight I am wearing these sunglasses for Leatherface, a 2017 movie, and you can't really wear the mask for this due to the problem of Leatherface technically not having a mask in this movie. So, Derek's going to give you the synopsis in 3, 2, 1, now. Well, for this movie, really all I can say is this movie was just a pre preview of it was basically just the beginning of where it all started. Like how Leatherface came to be, what his backstory was, who he met in his journey, and how his face became the scar as it was underneath that mask. <laughs> Which we didn't even know it was scarred in the other movies. Actually, I kind of noticed that in the last couple of movies. Oh. Okay. So, on to... I guess that was the synopsis. I can I can bring more about the movie if you want. Go ahead. Well, we find out that Leatherface came came from a of course crazy family, <laughs> as expected. But what we didn't know was that as a child he was taken from his family and put into a home for crazy children. A mental institute, if you will. And during this. And during our time in this movie, we see him go, we see who we thought, I thought was him, go on a killing spree with all the nurses and the head of the home himself. Killing, killing nurses, killing the head of the home, and running away. And the person I thought was Leatherface got shot in the head, which means a big shot to me. Boy, were you wrong. I guess you actually didn't look at the movie poster. No, I did not. That is pretty sad. So, let's get into the movie. Um, it was directed by Julian Mori, Alexander Bastillo, produced by Krista Campbell, Lottie Grubman, Carl Mazulcon, Les Weldon, screenplay by Seth M. Sherwood, music by John Frizzell, cinematography, cinematography by Anthony Sanier, and onto the film locations, which there was only one given, sadly. I guess a lot of the websites don't technically have the locations around this time, but... Basically, it was Bulgaria. 
I think possibly a sound studio for most of it in Bulgaria. But all it just says is Bulgaria. Brilliant. Glad to know it was filmed in Bulgaria. But where? I guess you could say that Leatherface was considered the Bulgarian brute of this movie. Oh, God. Um, Stefan Darf as Texas Ranger Hall. Hartman, who's actually the father of the mayor in the last movie we watched. He's also played Deacon Frost in Blade. Um, we have Vanessa Grass as Elizabeth Liz White. We have Sam Strike as Jedediah Sawyer Jackson, also known for Clyde Barrow from Timeless, a personal favorite show of mine. Um, we have Lily Taylor as Verna Sawyer, also known for Caroline Pierin from The Conjuring and The Nun, and Patty from Gotham. Chris Adamson as Dr. Lang, known for Burton from Le Miserable and Jimmy Legs from the Pirates of the Caribbean series. Well, to be exact, the second and third movies. Um, Finn Jane, I mean Finn Jones as Jeffy Sorrells, known for Teddy from Wrong Turn 5 and Iron Fist in Iron Fist. Which sadly was cancelled. Oh wait, no. I think that was Daredevil. Yeah, I think Iron Fist is still going. Never mind. We have James Bloor as Ike. Jessica Madsen as Clarice. <sighs> Sam Coleman as Bud. Julian Kustov as Ted Hardesty. The father of... Franklin and Sally. We have Dijon Angelov as Nubbin Sawyer. Lorena Kamberov as Betty Hartman, the daughter and basically the bitch that starts this all off. Um, Boris Kabachev as Child Jedediah Sawyer, and on to the gore score. Been a while since I heard you go with that. Oh right, slasher stats, fuck. <laughs> but anyway, feel free to stop me and correct me on this at any point, because I might have either added a couple or missed a couple. But what I counted was a total of 18 kills, a whopping 18 kills in this movie which may have set a record for this whole franchise. We have the quote-unquote thief having his leg sawed and then his head beaten by the Sawyer family. We have Betty crushed by what I think was a car engine or something. Yep, that's what that was. We have two doctors in the, ho in the mental hospital getting beaten by blood. We have a girl in bed getting strangled. Wait. Yeah. We have by hair. By hair. Yes, by her own yeah. hair. <laughs> we have the owner of the mental home having his head smashed through a window. A nurse, I think her tongue was ripped out? Nope. By Ike. She was cut in, her throat was slit and her mouth was slit. It looks like he had pulled her tongue out. Kinda looked like it. Alright, and moving on, we have a guy in the diner stabbed by Ike. Another guy shot. The waitress stabbed and then shot, and another guy shot in the head. We have Ike's head crushed in by Bud. We have who I call the crazy bitch with a headshot. 
We have Bud shot in the head by an officer, a cop beaten to death by Bud, no, by Jackson. We have another cop stabbed and eaten by a pig. We have the officer sawed to pieces by Jedediah's lawyer. And finally, we have the nurse's head sawed off at the end. I think you technically counted that wrong. Yeah, I might have. There was 22 deaths, actually. Which four did I miss? The orderly that was tossed out the window in the wheelchair. Uh -huh. Um, and... Did you say the nurse that was beaten by Verna? No, I didn't. I didn't know that that nurse was killed. And then there... Did you mention the two that was killed by Bud? The two... Yes, I mentioned those two. Oh. Um... Are you sure there was 22 and maybe not 20? It says 20. Two. Hmm. Well, anyway. Of course I counted that wrong, but still, it brings a whopping new record to this series. It does. You know what, I think they also counted the guy in the trailer. Wasn't that already just a corpse? I mean, technically, but he's still dead. Um, to rec reconcile this, let's move on to Favorite Kill. Which for me, had to have been when I get to the... Oh, here it is. Nurse Elizabeth gets decapitated by Chainsaw. <laughs> Bitch, if only you kept your mouth shut. I mean, literally, you see him calming down, he, I guess you could say he was like the, um, leather face in part two, but here, I mean in there, he had no girl telling him, calm down, calm down, this is not you, this is not you, and then, here we go, the line that caused him to kill her. It's your crazy fucking mother! It's your crazy... Ah! Uh. And honestly, compared to, like, my previous favorites, including... I think it was... Um... The 2003? No, wait, it was the... The beginning, um... The guy, yes, the guy getting, taking the chainsaw to his back and getting flung. This one, we get to see something different. I mean, we've seen people get beaten over the head, we've seen... Honestly, you know what, I think this is what I was waiting for in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. When I mentioned, I was kind of mad that one, that the mayor's... Yes, the mayor's son who chainsaw. did not get decapitated. But instead of the chainsaw getting thrown in the air it like I wanted, nope. They decapitate her like, um, I guess similar to Laurie Strode cutting Michael's head off in Halloween H2O or... original Fred 13th when she cuts off the head of Mi Mrs. Voorhees. Here, it's done with a big-ass chainsaw. And this got me hyped as soon as I saw the kill on a list on YouTube before watching this movie. It got me hyped to watch this. And, again, I really didn't think uh, Leatherface would get the chance to decapitate someone with his chainsaw in any of this movies. Bitch, you proved me wrong. And 
the look on her face and the slow-mo of the chainsaw as it goes towards her. It's just amazingly done. What about you? I have to say, my favorite kill has to be a cop getting eaten by pigs. <laughs> I just found it so hysterical. Like how, I knew that pigs, if they, if you weren't careful with them, they would kill you by eating you. I've seen it in some TV shows, but I never would have thought I'd see it again after so many, so many years of not seeing it. Well, there is the point that they were basically very feral since the Sawyers fed their pigs human meat instead of normal slop. That is very true, but I, t I didn't think I would get to see that. Like, I hadn't seen the pigs until that moment. <laughs> I think it's pretty gruesome, but we'll find out my opinion on that later. Um, when you think about it, a bunch of pigs just eating away at you while you're still alive. How, goose how much more gruesome do you want than that? You'll find out. Um, least favorite kill, guy gets stabbed in diner. I mean, yeah, they get a sight that he's basically packing in his right pocket. I don't, I think it was a Glock? No, wait, a revolver. Um, yes. but you barely even get a reaction out of the guy as his neck is being stabbed by, I think it was a butter knife? Or a stick? It looked a little bit like a scalpel, actually. Yeah, most likely it was a butter knife if it looks like a scalpel. Or it could have been a stick knife, whichever. But you don't really get a reaction out of him, and you don't get the blood spurt that you'd usually see when get someone gets stabbed, which, it's boring. I mean, I'm hoping they did that in the original before it was edited, but this was sad. What about you? My least favorite kill has to be Bud getting shot in the head. It's, it's not gory. You barely see any blood spurt out of it. And you never hear of Bud ever again after that. I mean, technically, I kind of got to disagree on that one, because the slow-mo, as Bud falls, and as the gun hits it, the bullet hits him, it's... It hits you in the feels. It does, but it's not a kill that I would necessarily enjoy. I guess. Like, you feel for the guy, but you don't feel entertained by what happened. Like, it, had he gone out in a way that was memorable, I could, uh, I could accept the kill, but just seeing him go out like that, that fast, was just, it really, it was a WTF moment for me. Hmm. Um, and lastly, a new one for this movie only. So, and it's been in a few other movies certain special movies that I do this for. Goriest kill. Deputy Sorrells gets fed to pigs. I was saving it for the goriest because my god, you're watching it. I mean, yeah, he just got stabbed, but you're watching as his body, his arms, just Pieces of flesh get ripped off by the pigs as we're literally watching, and without a care, um, Vera's just like, okay, come on, boys, he's at the old barn, let's go. And it's brutal because he just told them where he was, where Jedediah was, and this is how they thank them. But the worst part is just watching him get eaten alive. It's just... 
It was one of those parts that I was ready to fucking throw up. It's so gruesome. And that's what's, that's part of the reason why this is such a good movie. They don't technically hold back unless it's like a bland part where they just want to move us along. But yeah, this is goriest for me. Um, on to the facts. We have a box office of 956147 dollars. We have no budget as we know right now. Lionsgate and Millennium Films lost their rights to produce future Texas Chainsaw Massacre films, which was sad because they were going to make a lot more and they had a lot more ideas, but due to the delay of this film, because it was supposed to come out in 2016 instead of 2017, they kind of lost the rights to the movie and they lost money. Um... Sherwood compared the film to a art film called Badlands by claiming it's basically Badlands with gore. Which, sadly, I haven't seen Badlands. I'm not really big on those artsy films. But I wouldn't mind checking it out if it's compared to this. Um, final film produced in the series after Toby Hooper died on... August 26, 2017, and he was actually one of the producers for the movie. So we basically got to see the end of the series so far. Um, oh, I hope that so far becomes indefinite. I kind of hope not. I, I love how it ended, but I kind of want to see what happens next after 3D. Um, Thank you. I've had enough for one one year. <laughs> Premiered on DirecTV, which is pretty funny because as you're look at, watching the opening credits, you see DirecTV on it. Um, distributed by DirecTV, I think it says. Wow. I guess they couldn't get Comcast. Um, Leatherface starts out as a functional human being ruined by a horrific event, which being his friend was murdered, and his jaw was basically cut. Shot to shit. Yes, shot to shit. To the point where he is unable to talk now. And that ex... I mean, in the beginning, a lot of people played him off as retarded or mentally insane being and that's why he couldn't really talk but no no ladies and gentlemen Leatherface is not retarded he's just badly injured and I soon discovered that in the last two movies <laughs> um his first mask was made from both Hartman and Lizzie's face, which is pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, and it looks pretty fucking terrifying. Um, part half woman, half male, and just that scene, he smashes the mirror right after seeing it, and after slapping on some lipstick onto the lips, and it's just, I wish I could have seen the actual face on him before he smashed the mirror. Oh, the lipstick gave me PTSD from the next generation. Oh god, yes, my god. And the fur, and the original, and... The third movie. The third movie was okay. I don't think so. That's the one where he's just acting like a bitch. No, I believe that was the next generation, the fourth movie. No, that one he was yelled at by a girl. Well, next generation.
narration was the one where he's screaming most of the time. Huh. Might have to look at that later. But I definitely know he was wearing a girl's face in that one. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, he was. And if I remember correctly, you said that they portrayed it as whatever face he wears, he takes the personality of that face. Sadly, that was their excuse for both the next generation and the third movie, but let's not go back to that. I do not want to gain PTSD from that ugly ass fucking movie, and I'm sorry to all you that actually like it, but I refuse to watch it ever again. I'd rather watch the beginning or the 2003 remake. Um, but onto the actual movie. I'll let you go first. Well, this movie was basically the glorious and, if not the most reasonably terrifying of the films. Like, this movie does. The problem I have with this movie is the story is a little mind-boggling. Yes, I can understand he comes from a mental home because he was taken from his family. Yes, I can understand the reason why he doesn't talk. And yes, the trauma does sound good, does sound interesting as to why he's crazy now. But it's kind of a big jumble mess. And I didn't like how I saw this completely sane reasonable, reasonable human being get turned into this monster of a man. And I, I did enjoy the ending. It, it was intriguing. But I didn't like how they turned a character like Jackson into the monster we know as Leatherface. However, I'm not going to stop that from, I'm not going to keep but that keep me from enjoying what the movie was. And that was a prologue of the actual film. So I'd have to give this movie either an 8.5 or a 9. Hmm. For me, it felt like a better representation than what we got in the past. Like, yeah, we got the new, begin the new beginning, which didn't really give us much information on what's wrong with Leatherface, why he does what he does, and they claim that to be a prequel. I mean, I guess you could count that as one. It gives us information on, like, parts of the family, why, what, why, he, um, Sheriff lost his teeth, or how, um, Monty lost his two legs, but here, we get an actual explanation on why Leatherface is what he is, and uh, I know this came out two years ago, I honestly never saw any of the Texas Chainsaw Massacres, except for I think the New Beginning and the Reboot, like, around the time it came out, maybe a little later, when it was on Netflix, but here, this was way better than the rest. I mean, I like this whole trilogy, plus kind of the original. I mean, by these st today's standards, it's still kind of pretty bad, but this is the one I really want to watch right now. Um, well, this, then the original, and then 3D, which was one of my favorites until this one. Um, we get a story of Leatherface turned Jedediah turned Jackson, and how uh, he gets sent to a mental hospital, like we've said, um, because... His family essentially is crazy as fuck. They just killed the sheriff's daughter er, with a engine. 
right before, I mean, right after they kill, um, the... So-called thief. Yes. Who was stealing his, stealing their pigs, but... I don't know, it was really good. I mean, we get to see Grandpa finally in action in the beginning of the movie, beating the thief over the head because... Turns out the original Leatherface was a pacifist, not really into killing. And then we watch him grow up a bit. We get to see him from child to teenager, partially. I mean, we really just get the scenes of him as a teenager. And turns out he was a pretty calm guy, trying to keep his friend calm, but... Bud, who turned out to be a pretty big fucking maniac, and... This movie had me fooled because of that. It did. I mean, it even confused my mother, and it confused a lot of people. But then you start to notice, Bud's a little too big to match the poster. And Still, then... though, I mean... Leatherface himself was big and bulky, so I would assume that the big and bulky murderer would be the one we see become the monster we know today. I mean, yeah, we could guess that, but... Uh, I mean, later on, Leatherface does spend most of his life in a goddamn basement, making masks, so... Well, and chasing people, so basically you can see... That would get him big and bulky, but there were some characters I didn't really like. I mean, I liked Bob. I liked Lizzie. I mean, Bud. I liked Lizzie. I liked um, Jackson, Verna, but God, Ike and Claire, Clary, um, Clary, where, where should I begin? I mean, she's a crazy bitch. It just she yelled a lot. And this she was... I, I have that in my notes. She's crazy, bitch. Yeah, but... She didn't have to yell all her lines. I mean, I'm pretty sure her actor is really good at what she does, but... Try and speak a line. I mean, yeah, she... Did, technically, but... <sighs> She had that whole, I can do what I want attitude. Exactly, like what you'd see in a lot of animes. And plus, she was thirsty as hell for Ike. I mean, anyone and looked at Ike, or if a girl came near Ike, she threatened to shoot him with a shotgun. And when, um, Jake Jackson tried to explain the whole situation that Ike was trying... No, wait. Yeah, that Ike was trying to murder him and, um, J and Lizzie and Bud. She takes fucking Ike's side when he claims, oh, they were trying to run away, leave us here. No, Jackson was trying to get Lizzie back so she wouldn't die. Jesus Christ. And every five fucking minutes she wanted to shoot... Lizzie, I mean, I get it. You want to be the only girl for Ike. Lizzie wants nothing to do with Ike. Leave her alone. You don't have to be the only girl on the fucking planet. And how thirsty she, how retarded she looked when she was choking that one girl with her hair. And hmm, I wonder what the reason was. Oh, right, it was over Ike, and I doubt she was even looking at him or flirting with him. I mean, bitch, get a fucking... Ah, uh, fuck, what are those? Body pillow of Ike, for crying out loud. If you want to do it... How, I can tell you how thirsty she was for Ike. Apparently, Ike wasn't enough for her, so they decided to have a threesome with the corpse. Oh, God. Gross. But, um... And then Ike. 
douche of this movie, you know that's a big thing you need in a slasher movie, but he just took control too much. I mean, he's that guy that you don't want to hear anything from. And I'm kind of... I'm kind of glad that Bud curve stomped his ass on a fucking rock. Yes, I found that very friggin' satisfying, especially when he had his teeth on the rock. I can imagine that was extremely painful. I mean, that's basically what curve stomping is. Oh. Um, honestly? Put Bud in a fucking. Whoever played Bud? In a mafia movie! We need to see that. <laughs> and... <sighs> I did really enjoy this movie. It's just those two characters, but... Like you said, I'm not gonna let the bad parts ruin it. Um... <sighs> the look of the mask... I mean, again, we didn't get to see it on his face, but... It just, just looked... applying the lipstick was awful for me, though. <laughs> but it did look pretty cool, um, and I'm excited we actually finally got a reason for why Leatherface is what he is, and the special effects on his face just, I was waiting for the tongue to fucking flop out like you see in real life. It reminds me of an episode from A Thousand Ways to Die. The guy that's chewing bubblegum while making fireworks, and he puts the bubblegum in a thing filled with phosphate that you'd put in a firework, and he blows his jaw off, and it, you just, as you're watching, his tongue's just like off to the left side off to the left side, just hanging out. Oh, it has been years since I've seen that, and I still remember that to this day. And I'm pretty sure everyone does. And I'm still pissed that that show is can got cancelled. I mean, yeah, a lot of research. Gruesome and offensive. But at least it got to go for, I think, four seasons, maybe six? I just wish we'd gotten more. But, the main big part is this was a really good movie. He, um, special effects really good. The camera shots, I mean, they weren't as bad as the 3D, which with that whole camera flash, which surprisingly you didn't notice, but I did. I mean, we get one part of it in the beginning to kind of transition, but I gotta get, no offense to all you who put the first one as your number one, this is my number one. I give it a ten. I mean, this is the one origin story I did not mind watching. I mean, Halloween, yeah, that was really good. I enjoyed it, but basically just copied the original movie later on. Gives a small moment with young Michael, but then it just rehashes the whole movie. Here? Ain't no rehashing. They basically did what they went to do. They made a prequel like they were supposed to, unlike the beginning. And, surprisingly, this is how they made it a trilogy. The prequel to the first movie, and then 3D. And I have to admit, I can't wait to see more from this director. But, so yeah, 10, you said 9. Um... So, yeah, that's our opinion on this movie. Um, we'll see you guys. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys next week for The Bride of Chucky. Because we're going back to the Child's Play series. Before we go yeah, to Saw. It's my favorite movies of the series. Oh, God. It's everyone's favorite. But, 
So yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Um, the notification bell is right next to the subscribe button, just so you guys know, for those who have never had to push the notification, so you can catch our next video, or you can click on our icon so you can watch previous videos, but any final words? Some things can be done right if given another try. Hmm. Yeah. Hopefully they do that for Fred 13, because we really need another good one like the 2009. But we'll, we'll see you guys next week, and remember, hashtag humans, human is meat too. Good night, goodbye, and Slasher Club, signing off.